Hello everybody, I wanted to talk about this lesson because I know that many of you are struggling with it. Alright, so let me get this to full screen and we'll start talking about it. Now you were perfectly capable of doing this, there was never a question about that, but you just needed to read and think. All right, so what we're going back to is looking on the periodic table at the bottom of each square. There is a number there. So the essential questions for this assignment are what defines an atomic mass? What is an atomic mass unit, also known as AMU? How do we figure out the atomic mass of each element? How many atoms are in the gram atomic mass? That means the atomic mass in a gram amount like we'd measure in lab. And what is the connection between gram amounts and the number of particles in a mole? So we're going to learn this new word, mole. And it's a, an amount, a mole amount. And that's going to be number of particles and it's also going to be number of grams to measure out on the balance. Number of grams. All right. So, let's go over and look at this. What defines the atomic mass? Well, the title of this is atomic mass of an element in grams equals the mole amount of that element. So, first, what defines the atomic mass? It's the quantity of matter contained in an atom of that element. All right, so what is the mass of sodium atom? What is the mass of a copper atom? It's expressed as a multiple of 1 12th of the carbon atom, although that is less used as a standard now than it used to be, or this amount of a gram, which is like 2 times 10 to the negative 23rd gram. All right. So, what we're going to go down, we'll talk about this amount later, but as you can see, one atomic mass unit is incredibly tiny. We could never measure that amount, right, of a sodium atom. We could never measure that amount of a copper atom. So it isn't useful in the lab, but how could we make it be? How could we make it be? Well, all right, let's look at the squares on the periodic table to find the atomic mass of each. So the bottom number in each square is the average mass, weighted by the abundance of the isotopes of that element. All right, so isotopes have same number of protons, but different numbers of neutrons in the nucleus. Different numbers of neutrons in the nucleus. And so, for example, hydrogen has three, hydrogen one, hydrogen two, and hydrogen three. All right, one, two, and three represent the mass numbers. And this represents, this number right here, represents the average mass of all the isotopes. But it's weighted. Because if you add 1, 2, and 3, which makes 6, divide by 3, we'd say the average mass is 2. But it's only 1.008. So what does that indicate? It means that it's weighted by the commonality or the proportion of isotopes of each kind. So this is the majority isotope. And we know that because if the average weighted mass depends on how many, how plentiful different isotopes are, then this one says that hydrogen is mostly the hydrogen one. 
Hydrogen 2 would be that the nucleus has a proton and one neutron. Hydrogen 3 would be that hydrogen would have one proton and three, two neutrons in the nucleus. All right, isotopes is a topic we didn't spend very much time on at all. So if I think it's necessary, I will come back. Now, if we look at this, we see that magnesium can have um, a variety of different isotopes, but the average of all of them is 24.305. All right? Similarly, sodium can have many isotopes, but the most plentiful isotope must be around sodium-23 because look how close our, our mean is, or our average mass is to 23, all right? 22.990. So we find that while isotopes have a whole number, sodium-23, sodium-24, sodium-25, we find out that the average mass is a fractional amount a whole number with a fractional amount after. And then here is uranium, 238.029. All right, so this makes you think that uranium, 238, might be the most plentiful isotope of uranium. All right, so the definition of the mass isn't as important today as the fact that each element's atom has an average mass that we use, and it's listed on the bottom of each periodic table square. All right, so as the size, as the atomic number increases, the mass of the atom increases because, of course, it has more protons, but also it has more neutrons in the center as well. So isotopes of the same elements always have the same number of protons. What they differ on is the number of electrons, all right? So that means we just need an average mass of an atom of each kind in order to figure out what we're going to do today. All right. Since one atom has such an extremely small mass, even very large elements like uranium, have way too small a mass for ever, us to ever measure on a chemical balance. So how do we go about figuring this out? So this is the gist that we're going to talk about right now. How can we use atomic mass then if it's too small for us to measure? Well, we change the unit from atomic mass units, all right? So change the mass of one atom, all right, the mass of one atom in AMUs to grams, all right, because gram amounts can be measured. So let's see how we're going to discuss that. In order to measure amounts of the elements now, we could use a chemical balance, but it isn't one atom. An ingenious solution was made. Attempts to figure out how many atoms would be present in an atomic mass amount in grams. All right, so that meant like up here, how many particles would be in 24.305 grams of magnesium? How many particles would be in a gram amount of this, 22.990 grams? Or in the case of uranium, how many particles of uranium, how many atoms would it take to have a mass of 238.029? And the answer in all cases was 6 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in the gram amount. You're probably saying, oh, no, I don't like that number. I don't like exponents all, at all, but I particularly don't like them when they're really big. So we'll have to think about what this means. All right, so... 
Spreading out lipid molecules in water to one layer was one attempt to find out how many atoms would be present. So if on a lake you put in a drop of um, some sort of lipid, all right, and you let it spread out to the level of one atom thick, the value of the number of particles could be obtained. All right. The amount was determined to be huge, 10 to the 23rd atoms of an element. Well, it's like the number of popcorn kernels covering the United States, six miles deep. Oh, my gosh, you're kidding. Yes. So... This quantity of atoms was abbreviated as M-O-L, short for molecule, and spelled out as mole. So specifically, the mole is defined as 6 times 10 to the 23rd particles of sodium, or a mole of hydrogen, 6 times 10 to the 23rd hydrogen atoms, a mole of copper, 6 times 10 to the 23rd copper atoms. So the question is, but how much mass would this, if we had this many particles of copper on the balance, how many grams should it add up to? And the answer is in the ballpark of 63. In the ballpark of 63. All right, so you'll look on your periodic table. All right, go ahead and look at your periodic table now, and you'll see that yes, so let's go look at the next day's assignment because it has a periodic table. All right. So we're going to go to copper and it says 63.55 is the average mass of a mole of copper particles. 63.55 grams. All right. Now this is one of the more uh, difficult concepts in chemistry. So that's why we're going to gradually work our way through these ideas, okay? So let's go over here, and we're going to look at this column. It says, use your tabletop periodic table to fill in the average atomic mass of each element's atoms. All right, so if we look up gold, I'm going to go get that one since I don't have yours, do I? I don't have yours, so I'm just going to copy this one. And take it back over here, and we'll just put this right here. Okay, now let's go see. All right, so when we need to know that, we'll just go over here and get this. And in the meantime, I could make this slightly smaller. All right, now, so it says silver, the atomic mass. So we go over here and we look at silver, silver, copper, silver, gold, 107.8, it says. All right. On your periodic table, though, it says 108.87. All right, so that's what I put. And that means that is the mass of one atom of silver in atomic mass units. Gold, 197, it says. 197.0 atomic mass units, AMU. That's for one atom of gold. Carbon, we look over here at carbon, and it says 12.011 on your periodic table, doesn't it? Iron, F-E, here it is, 55.85, 55.85. So when we're reading off the periodic table, we just give all the numbers that the table gives us. And sulfur, S, 32, here it is, 
All right, so these are the atomic masses, and the periodic table, the number at the bottom of the square, tells us what the average mass of all the sodium, excuse me, all of the sulfur atoms would be. All right, now, it says, what about the diatomic element formula? So like H2, N2, O2, etc. Well, these, with hydrogen, the formula is H2, so it would be two times the number on the periodic table for one atom, two times 1.008. All right, now, in this one, let's put for nitrogen two times 14.01. 14.01. I'll equal and enter, and then it does the calculation for me. All right, I'm going to have to do this this way because it looks like what I was doing there was, uh, I mean, I made a picture. So two times 14 points. 01 equals 28.02 AMUs, all right, for the mass of N2. Oxygen would be 2 times, oxygen says 16.00. 16.00 equals enter, and it does the calculation for me, except it's not very good about putting the zeros on. All right, chlorine, the same thing, Cl2. So all of these are going to be two times whatever a chlorine atom is, and it's 35.45. So if you have a periodic table handy, you can do all of these easily. Iodine, 2 times, let's go find iodine's mass, 126.9. 126.9 equals enter. All right, and finally bromine. Br2 is going to be two times 79 something, I think, 79.90, two times 79.90. All right, I lost a decimal point. All right, equals, and then I'm letting OneNote do the calculation, 159.8 atomic mass units, AMU. So for the diatomic elements, their formula is Br2, I2, etc. So we have to multiply the number on the periodic table for the average mass by 2. All right, now. So a mole amount has two, it's the number, it's the atomic mass given in grams on the periodic table, or it's the number of atoms in the gram amount, the number on the periodic table in grams, and that's this huge 6 times 10 to the 23rd number. And that's what a mole amount is. It's either the number on the periodic table square below the average mass in grams, or it is 6 times 10 to the 23rd particles of sodium or particles of hydrogen H2, a molecule of hydrogen for the diatomic elements. We have 6 times 10 to the 23rd diatomic atoms. All right. So, this is about how big is a mole, and it probably was helpful for you to figure that out. So how is a mole amount connected to the particle theory? Well, the whole idea is that reactions happen when particles interact successfully. It's at the particle level that we have reactions. So every feature of those reactions depends on the number of particles that are available and free to collide with each other at high speed and successfully, meaning that it results in new products. 
All right. So equal mole amounts of two reactants tell us there's the same number of atoms or the same number of compound particles of each. All right, so chemists want to know mole amounts because mole amounts tell you the number of particles that are involved in the reaction. All right, gram amounts versus mole amounts. Equal gram amounts of sodium and uranium do not have the same number of atoms, do they? The gram amounts, sodium 22.99, uranium, no, uranium is much higher. They don't have the same number of atoms, do they? Because uranium atoms are so big. And sodium atoms are so small. So, we can't really compare them, the gram amount of atoms, because atoms vary in size. And we know it's atoms that are combining. All right, in a particle or compound particles. So let's look at these conclusions that you did. What defines an atomic mass? It's the average mass on the periodic table. All right, the average mass on the periodic table. Whoops, on the periodic table tells us the size of the atom in mass. All right. The unit of mass is AMU for one atom or grams for many, many atoms. All right. What is an atomic mass unit? Uh, the atomic mass unit is the mass of one atom. Is, is, whoops, the mass of one atom. And the abbreviation, the abbreviation is AMU. So AMU is a unit. And it means atomic mass unit. How do we figure out the atomic mass of each element? Well, the atomic, the average atomic mass, the average atomic mass for the isotopes of each element is the bottom number on the square, on the periodic square. It is a weighted average mass that depends on how plentiful each isotope of that atom is and how many atoms are in the gram atomic mass. The mass the average mass in grams contains 6 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of that element. And this, of course, is a superscript. What's the connection between gram amounts and the number of particles in a mole in an element or a compound? Well, the gram atomic mass is the number. Oops, let me put that is the mass of 6 uh, times 10 to the 23rd atoms of that element. That amount is one mole. All right, and we'll just make this 
a superscript. All right. All right, now I want you to see how well you did on that. I know that you were having to think for yourself. All right, no big deal though, that's okay. So, what I'm going to do then is see if I can pull that up. All right, and we're going to